Welcome to a presentation on reflecting graphs in the x and y axes and also rotating graphs around the origin. In order to illustrate this concept we're going to consider this question and the question is the graph of y equals the square root of x in blue it's shown below on the same set of axes graph the following functions. The first one is y equals minus square root x. The next one is y equals the square root of minus x. And the third one is y equals minus the square root of minus x. Each one of these may look quite similar, but they produce very different graphs. And so we're going to examine the differences uh, between them all. Uh, now, before we go on, I, the, the main reason we'd like to, uh, we, we want to have a look at these is to illustrate three concepts, which are shown below here. Uh, these are definitions about how we reflect graphs or rotate graphs. It's very similar to shifting functions, except instead of shifting now, we're going to be reflecting and rotating graphs. So here, this, this first rule says that to reflect a graph in the x-axis, so this horizontal axis, what we do is we replace y with minus y in the original expression. And if we do that, that will give the same graph as the original expression, just reflected in the x-axis. Also, to reflect a graph in the y-axis, we replace x with minus x. And finally, to rotate a graph 180 degrees around the origin, we replace x with minus x and replace y with minus y. So before we construct any uh, a table of values for these, let's just predict what they're going to look like based on these definitions. So here, let's have a look at this first one in orange. So here we've got y equals minus square root x. Let's just quickly write this in a different way. Let's multiply both sides by minus 1. If we were to do that, then we would get minus y equals the square root of x, considering that a negative times a negative is a positive. And here, how is this orange graph related to this blue graph? Well, all we've done is we've taken this blue graph and we've replaced y with minus y. Here we've got y, but in orange here we've got minus y. And this rule down here says that if we replace y with minus y, then that's the same as reflecting the graph of this original function in the x-axis. So in other words, we're thinking, based on, on this first rule, that this orange graph will be the same as this blue graph, except it will be reflected in the x-axis. So this is the x-axis. So if we reflect this graph down, it looks like we're going to have some sort of graph that that goes out maybe like this, something along those lines. Okay, what about y equals the square root of minus x? This green function differs from this blue function in that we've replaced x with minus x. Here we have the square root of x, whereas here we have the square root of minus x. And the second rule says that to reflect a graph in the y-axis, replace x with minus x. So by replacing x here with a minus x, we think that this green graph is going to look the same as this blue graph, except reflected in the y-axis, according to our rule. So this is the y-axis, so we're predicting that this graph will look something like, like this. Again, I should have noted before that this orange point is included here, and also this for, for our former graph. This green point is included for this graph as well. Okay, what about this last one? Here we've got y equals minus the square root of minus x. Well, we could rewrite this if we multiply both sides to my minus 1. We can rewrite this as, as minus y equals square root the square root of minus x. So that's the same statement, just both sides being multiplied by minus 1. And this pink function is the same as this blue function, except y has been replaced with minus y, and x has been replaced with minus x. And according to our last rule, it says to rotate a graph 180 degrees around the origin, replace x with minus x and y with minus y. Well, x has been replaced with minus x here, y has been replaced with minus y. So we're predicting that this graph will be the same as this blue graph, except rotate at 180 degrees round. So that's going to look something like this, I think. Let's confirm that these are our three graphs by constructing a table of values. So in this table of values, we're going to consider a number of x values, and then we're going to consider 
y, the y values for this orange function, so y equals minus square root of x. Then we'll consider the y values of this green function as well, so here we'd have y equals square root minus x. Let's consider the y values for this final function as well, which is y equals negative square root of minus x. And we'll construct a table of values. So our table is going to look something like this. And the values that we'll consider are minus 4, minus 1, 0, 1, and 4. Okay, so let's consider at x equals minus 4, what is y equal to here? Well, here we have y equals minus the square root of minus 4. And we run into difficulty here because one of the fundamental rules about square roots is that we can't have the square root of a negative number. In other words, so if we substitute minus 4 in here, we, we don't get something that is meaningful. So in other words, at minus 4, y is undefined undefined, so it's just not part. So at x equals minus 4, we don't get any value for y. In other words, x equals minus 4 is not a part of the domain for this function. What about x equals minus 1? Well, same thing. If we got minus square root of minus 1, that's going to be undefined. Right, we, don't, we can't have this. We can't have a negative value underneath our square root sign. What about x equals 0? But x equals 0, we have minus the square root of 0. That's the square root of 0 is 0. This is minus 0. So that just equals 0. What about at x equals 1? Well, at x equals 1, we're going to have y equals minus the square root of 1. The square root of 1 is 1. So this is minus 1. What about x equals 4? Well, here we're going to have minus the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So this is going to be minus 2. Okay, so it looks like we've got three points here that we can graph. 0 and 0, 1 and minus 1, 4 and minus 2. Let's go ahead and graph these on this graph. So here we've got 0 and 0, is this point here. We've got 1 and minus 1, that's one unit right of the origin and one unit down, which is this point here. And here we've got 4 and minus 2, so this is 4 units right of the origin, 2 units down. Okay, so this, these points do lie on this, this, this curve that we thought um, this, this function would look like. So sure enough, we can be assured that this is correct. This is going to be the function represented by this orange expression. And it's the same as this blue function just reflected in the x-axis, which we predicted from our rule. Okay, let's go ahead and have a look at this green function. So here we're going to have y equals, at x equals minus 4, we're going to have y equals the square root of minus, and then minus 4. Well, a negative times a negative is a positive, so this is going to be the equal to the square root of 4. Negative 4, negative, the negative of a negative is, is a positive, so this is going to be equal to square root of 4. Square root of 4 is just 2. Okay, what about x equals minus 1? So here we're going to have y equals square root of minus minus 1. Well, by similar reasoning, we're going to have this is equal to the square root of 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. So here we're going to have uh, x equals minus 1, y equals 1. What about 0? What well, x equals 0, y equals the square root of minus 0. Well, this minus 0 is just the same as saying 0. So here, have the square root of 0, the square root of 0 is 0. What about for x equals 1 and x equals 4? Well, for each of these, we're going to have the square root of, say, minus 1. But that is going to be undefined, because we can't have the square root of minus 1. We don't have any definition for what that means. So this is going to be undefined. And similarly, the square root of minus 4 is going to be undefined as well. So for, for this function, x equals 1 and x equals 4 aren't a part of the domain. In other words, we've got three points here. The three points are minus 4 and 2. We've got minus 1 and 1, and here we've got 0 and 0. Let's graph these. 0 and 0 is going to be here. Minus 1 and 1, well, that's going to be this point here. Minus 1 and 1. Minus 4 and 2, 4 units left of the origin, 2 units up. So sure enough, again, we can see that this, this is going to be our graph. 
we've confirmed that these two these points do lie on the graph so we're quite confident that this is our graph and the graph of this green function is the same as the graph of this blue function just reflected in the y-axis. So This is looking pretty good so far. Let's just finally confirm that this final guess we had based on, on this rule is correct. So let's go at y equals, oh sorry, at x equals minus 4 we have minus minus x and so x is going to be minus 4. Okay, so this is a bit of a mouthful. So here we've got minus the square root of minus minus 4. Well, a negative times a negative is a positive, so this is negative square root 4. Square root 4 is 2, so that's going to be negative 2. Okay, so at x equals negative 4, y equals negative 2. What about x equals negative 1? Well, here we're going to have negative square root of negative negative 1. Well, negative times a negative is a positive, so here we're going to have the negative square root of 1. And the square root of 1 is just 1, so it's going to be negative 1. Okay, what about x equals 0? At x equals 0, we're going to get negative the square root of negative 0. Well, negative 0 is the same as saying 0, so here this is the square root, negative square root of 0. So that's just going to be negative 0, and that's just going to be 0. So x equals 0, y equals 0. What about at x equals 1? We're going to run into a similar problem we had here, which is we're going to have at x equals 1, we get the square root of minus 1, which is undefined. So we're going to have this is going to be undefined. And same with this one. For at x equals 4, y equals the negative square root of a negative number, which means this will be undefined. In other words, our, our points that we've, we've assembled here, the points are minus 4 and 2. We've also got minus 1, sorry, and minus 2. We've got minus 1 and minus 1, minus 1 and minus 1, and we've also got 0 and 0, 0, 0. Let's plot these three points. 0, 0 is this point. Minus 1, minus 1 is this point. And negative 4, minus 2 is this point here. So sure enough, these points cross at the predicted line, the projected line that we thought it would be. So we know that our, uh, our initial guess was indeed correct. So that's how you can figure out uh, whether or not a graph is reflected in the x-axis, the y-axis, or rotated 180 degrees around the origin. It's very useful for graphing, as we saw that our, our original guesses took very little time to formulate based on these rules, but this took quite a bit of time constructing this table. So if you know these rules, you can quickly graph some functions without having to figure out what they're going to look like from a table of values.